Hi, everyone. I'm back. Uh, I'm delighted to be welcoming our next speaker today. Uh, I met uh, Dr. Jane Philpott in Montreal last year at a convention. And when I met her, you meet a lot of people at a convention. Uh, and some people stand out and some people don't. She really stood out. Uh, I remember uh, listening to her story. I remember listening to the way she communicated. I remember listening to the way uh, people responded to her, thinking, wow, uh, if we can get this woman into the House of Commons, if we can get in her serving Canadians in a different way, we'll be very, very lucky people. She has a tremendous uh, resume, a family physician, uh, an associate professor, minister, we were talking this morning about the people, the talented people who are communicating their love, their knowledge to the next generation of people. It's very important that we hear those kinds of things too. Uh, she's worked in Niger, uh, in Africa. She's worked on family health care teams. She's award winning. Uh, Minister Philpott also founded Give a Day to World AIDS in 2004, and I just was, you know, I was on my, uh, I was on Twitter this morning, because we're all on Twitter, but this is, this is your new health minister, as, as tweeted, it's world, it's hashtag World AIDS Day, please consider donating a day's pay to one of the great organizations supporting people affected by hashtag HIV, and it's at Give a Day for those that are listening and watching at home. Uh, this is a woman who walks the talk. We have a physician in Health Canada. She's been on the front line. She's seen it. She's got a huge mandate from the, the uh, Prime Minister. Uh, she was in Jordan two days ago. One of the things that are, is on her mandate is helping to resettle the refugees that we've got here in Canada, uh, or that are coming here to Canada. And she was, she was on the ground two days ago with Minister Sajan and Minister McCallum. So she's already walking the talk for us here in Canada. So we're looking forward to uh, she's got a tall order uh, in terms of dealing with the provinces and trying to put some new order into our healthcare system, but I think it's in very capable hands. So, Minister Philpott. Thank you very much, Susan, for the kind introduction, and thank you to all of you for uh, inviting me here and giving me a few moments to, to greet you. I think it's a good thing that you changed the order. I think I needed to hear what Josh had to say. That was a, a fantastic presentation and inspiring. And it, I wish I could be with you all day because obviously you've got incredibly top quality presentations. I have to tell Josh that, uh, I don't know where you're sitting anymore. There you are, okay. <laughs> um, my life was changed by electronic medical records about uh, eight years ago when, when uh, the, I changed my practice through adopting. I won't tell you what vendor it is, but we, we can talk later. Uh, but uh, congratulations on the excellent work that you're doing, and I, I really enjoyed your remarks. So I, I'm really delighted to be here. I'm impressed with the theme, with the agenda of the day. Uh, you know that creating a sustainable healthcare system for Canada is at the core of my mandate, as Susan implied. And so I'm delighted to have just a few moments to share a few of my insights uh, as a physician and now as a policymaker. It's a huge honor to be appointed Minister of Health. It's the sort of thing that I suspect there are people in the room that dream someday that they could be Minister of Health, and I'm sure each one of you could contribute incredible things to that portfolio. On the one hand, it feels like a thoroughly daunting task, mais dans un autre sens, il serait juste de dire que j'ai passé toute ma vie d'adulte à me préparer à ce poste. La politique est naturellement la prochaine étape que je consacre à aider les gens à mener une vie sain, saine et enrichissante. The lessons that I've learned as a doctor over the last 30 years, both living and working in West Africa for a decade and here in Canada uh, since then, have really helped me to understand, as you all know, that the goals um, of of achieving sustainability in healthcare, the goals of helping people to have healthy and meaningful lives require much more than good medicine. Uh, as you know, it requires a strong economy where everyone has a chance to prosper. It, re it requires a healthy environment. And it requires inclusive policies that give fair access to opportunities for everyone. It's my understanding that the Honourable Deb Matthews was here this morning and that she spoke, I believe, about income inequality and its impact on health. And I hardly want to echo the emphasis that she gave. I would venture to suggest that 
almost, if not every, policy decision that a government makes will have an impact either directly or, impact or indirectly on the health of the people that government seeks to serve. And so with that in mind, I'm very proud of our government that has hit the ground running with a very ambitious agenda, all of which in some, one way or another will impact the health of Canadians. It was mentioned by Susan that I'm chair of the Cabinet Committee overseeing refugee resettlement. And one of my most immediate priorities has been this massive effort to, report, re, to uh, support the resettlement of Syrian refugees, which we announced last week. I was delighted uh, last weekend to visit Jordan and to be very much encouraged by what we saw there and by the incredible work of a formidable team uh, that is making the visa processing possible. I'm also charged, as you may know, with a mandate to strengthen Medicare. That means restoring federal leadership in health care to the role that it should play, to uphold a national vision which defends the basic principles of the Canada Health Act, including universality and accessibility, and working collaboratively, as Susan suggested, with provinces and territories to improve outcomes and improve quality of care. Today, and I think Josh alluded to this, but today there's increasing recognition amongst health policy experts that putting more money into the system isn't necessarily the answer. People will always ask for more money, but that's not actually where we're going to find the answers. As others have mentioned, I'm sure today, what Canada needs to do is break down barriers to spread these incredible innovative projects that all of you are involved in, to make better use of the existing resources, be they human resources or otherwise, all of this to improve services and outcomes for patients. I am very interested in your ideas and send them my way as you can. If, if nothing else, tweet me with your idea and I, I will be sure to follow up on the link uh, even if I can't get back to you right away. Uh, we, I'm interested in your ideas because the answers are out there. You will help us to ensure that better integration of services, for example, uh, is, is undertaken. You will help to have ideas about how new funding models could help to improve our healthcare system. In the last three weeks, I've had the privilege of speaking with all of my provincial and territorial counterparts, and we're going to be sitting down together in January to begin discussions on a new multi-year health accord with long-term funding. And our goal in that health accord is to support action on our common priorities. I won't go through all the pieces of the health court accord, but they are all things that are important to you and I, such as improving access to home care for Canada's aging population. You may know that we're also committed to renewing our nation-to-nation -nation relationship with Indigenous people, and my department's ongoing work to improve health services with, for First Nations is a fundamental goal, fun, fundamental for achieving this goal. We also are committed to supporting the implementation of many of the recommendations of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in cooperation with other levels of government. So to put it simply, our government is committed to improving the health of Canadians. And to that end, we're working on a broad array of issues, whether it be legalizing and regulating marijuana to keep it out of the hands of children, to regulating trans fats and salts in processed food, to improving information about sugar on food labels, and to changing tobacco packaging. My list is long. But we've been asked to, uh, I, I guess I'll mention a couple of other things. We've been asked, as you may know, to respond to the Supreme Court's uh, Carter decision, striking down laws against physician-assisted dying. And to this end, I'm going to be working with my colleague, the Minister of Justice, and with the provinces and territories on this important and complex issue. Les Canadiens accordent de l'importance à leur santé. Ils sont certainement attachés à leur système de soins de santé, et ils s'attendent à ce qu'ils soient là lorsqu'ils en ont le plus besoin. As Minister of Health, I look forward to meeting with many of you, as many as I can, over the coming months and years. The creation of sustainable health systems could never be accomplished by any one individual, by any one organization. It requires the vision and determination of society as a collective. You are our key partners in the health system. Your advice and active contributions will be required to ensure that Canada succeeds both in ensuring the long-term viability of the healthcare system, but also in our ultimate goal, that of keeping Canadians healthy. Thank you very much and all the best. Merci beaucoup.